So guys, uh, it's Tiger with Pacific Rim Video, and we're here with one of the great actors of Lowriders. Now, Tony, you clean up really nice, a little bit different from your character in the film, right? <laughs> so, uh, and, and he's so dapper with the, the matching shoes and everything. So, real quick, uh, do you, did you grow up with lowrider culture at all? No, I did not. Um, I grew up with a very old school Hispanic mentality. Um, you know, a lot of football in the house, and football I mean soccer. Um, and yeah, I didn't I didn't know too much if, about low riding culture at all. You know, I was I was more into you know uh, uh, the rap scene and things like that uh, in in black culture than I was low riding. So it was a nice little. Thing uh, uh, to get into and research while I was doing this movie, and I, I was very, I'm very interested, and still, I love the culture, and I, I think it's so wonderful. Well, speaking of music, I feel like music goes pretty hand in hand with lowrider culture, right? Absolutely. So, if you had your own, well, first off, if you had your first own lowrider, what would it be? <laughs> uh, ooh, 79 Impala. Yeah, blue. Blue is always a great color. That's what I would do. Yeah, 79 Impala Blue. You're in your blue, 79 Impala, riding hard down the street, top down. What are you jamming? You know what I'm jamming to? I'm jamming to Redbone. Redbone? Yeah, Childish Gambino. Here's the thing. Low riding is not attached to any type of music. You can be your own. Go down playing Sam Cooke, man. It's about you and your, core, you and your culture, man. Doesn't matter what song you're playing. As long as you're free and you're loving it, who cares, right? So you're saying I could play like George Michael Wham? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I want George Michael Freedom, right? Oh, six minutes long. Bob O'Reilly, The Who. Why not? I think that's what's great. But also, you do got to choose the right song for cruising. No deep tracks. No. <laughs> Some Barry White, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby making music. But, so, um, yeah. Well, I was going to ask, so your involvement in the film has... How do you think it's helped change your perception of low writing or maybe some of the misconceptions of it? Um, you know, I... I it's made me more aware about different cultures and the way people are treated. You know, uh, definitely I had slight misconceptions as a, as a young child seeing a person with a, a, a tattoos walking down the street and saying, oh, you know, that's a gangster because that's what uh, the news and everyone's been told us. But now being in this lowrider culture, having worked in it and stuff, I know that that's not the case, you know, it's like dropping all these misconceptions of saying, you know, this is wrong, just because a person does this, it's like not judging a book by its cover, and I think that's wonderful. And you know, low rider culture is worldwide right now, what do you think resonates with people from Japan doing it, people in the film doing it, people in LA? Yeah, it's, it's I, you know, as corny as it's going to sound because of the uh, Fast and the Furious movies, it's family. It's a culture of being united and strong, and I think that's what's so wonderful about those cultures, you just want to be you want to be there with everyone. You want to just, you know, have a family, have a group to fit in with. And that's universal for everyone to want. And listening to Wham, you know. Listening to Wham. Or, well, uh, what, uh, what new projects can you tell us that are coming down the line after Lowriders? Sorry? Uh, what projects down the line do you have after Lowriders? Um, I'm working on this very, very small indie movie called uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, and I, I heard they're, you know, they're going to shoot that on the red, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're very lucky that we got a budget to shoot it on the red. Um, but yeah, uh, I got that coming out July 7th, so please go check that out. Um, and then, who knows what else is next?